Uh, well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you so much for being here. I just want to give a shout out to all the advocates who came out today to not just join us for this hearing, not to support the hearing, but to demand accountability. That's what this is about. Because after all, the Supreme Court, that building right there, the justice that is supposed to happen in that building right there belongs to all of us, the American people, not to special interests or the highest bidder. So thank you because we absolutely need your energy, your passion, and your leadership to move this forward. You see, too many times, just over the past couple of years, Americans have had to gather on the steps of the Supreme Court to protest for our fundamental rights, at times trying to secure those fundamental rights, too often to defend rights that we thought were a matter of settled law. And of course, have been pushing for the court to hold itself to the bare minimum of ethical standards be left up to the court, we never would have learned of the fully paid for luxury travel by a Supreme Court justice or the millions of dollars in real estate purchases by a GOP mega donor from Supreme Court justices. That's because the Supreme Court lacks a clear, enforceable, binding code of ethics. A code, by the way, that other government officials have to abide by. President does, members of Congress do, other administration officials do. People just assume the Supreme Court justices, if anybody, would abide by a clear, enforceable code of ethics. But they refuse. They have the power, but they refuse to impose one on themselves. And so let's be clear about why we are here today. The highest court in the land should not be subject to the lowest ethical standards. The public is justifiably worried that the Supreme Court values billionaire donors over everyday Americans. And who could blame them? Actions speak louder than words. And so what we're saying at today's hearing is we clearly can't trust you to police yourselves. So Congress will have to do it for you. That's right. That's right. I was disappointed as many of us were to learn that Chief Justice Roberts chose not to testify at our hearing today. Just further evidence at their resistance. Because ultimately the oversight that we're demanding will help the court restore its integrity and its credibility within the American people. I'm disappointed, but like all of you, not really surprised. It's consistent with the years and years of refusal to peel back the curtain and establish transparency at the Supreme Court. And so again, it's only further uh, clear to all of us that it's time for Congress to act. That's why I joined my colleagues last month, Senators Whitehouse and Blumenthal leading the charge and in introducing a bill to finally bring the need of transparency and accountability to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court Ethics Recusal and Transparency Act would mandate a binding code of ethics for members of our highest court and create a long overdue process for the public disclosure of gifts, recusal standards, and thorough investigation for misconduct. It's an important first step to repairing trust between the American people and the Supreme Court. But it's also clear that up against a culture of secrecy and convenient disclosure mistakes, we have a whole lot more work ahead to restore integrity and impartiality. While we hope the court would work with us to achieve this, they uh, refuse. And so ultimately, we have an obligation to the American people to make this happen. And make no mistake, we will act with or without their participation. Thank you all very much. We'll see you in committee.